Hey, I'm Jake. And I'm Brock. And this is Smart Tech Reviews, brought to you by Smart Deploy, where we provide unbiased, unsponsored reviews of technology aimed at corporate environments. That's right. If sysadmins manage it, we review it. And today, we're taking a look at the Keychron K6 Compact Mechanical Keyboard. That's right. We're going to see how clicky it is. We're doing another keyboard here. Will this one hold up to the last keyboard we did? I guess you'll have to stick around and find out. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below letting us know what tech you'd like us to review next. So let's get into it, Brock. Hey, was that our best intro yet? Yes. Welcome to Smart Tech Reviews. This is episode six. We're reviewing the Keychron K6 today. It's this keyboard you see right here. When reviewing keyboards on this show, we have one goal, and that is to explain how well the keyboard that we're reviewing does in a corporate environment, in an office environment. Uh, would this be a keyboard that you as a sysadmin or a, an IT manager would invest in to give to your end users or to your team? We're going to let Brock start us off by diving into, let's let's talk about the specs, let's talk about price point, and uh, let's just, let's hit it all. Uh, we're dealing with another mechanical keyboard here. This is the Keychron K6, or Keychron K6, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, again, I would say it's 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 kind of aimed at the corporate environment. You know, it's not that flashy. It doesn't have a lot of RGB going on. It looks really good. You know, it's eye catching, looks good on your desk and it offers a really good typing experience. Um, this version that we've got here is a 65% compact keyboard. 65%. Yeah. So, so you're missing out the 10 key. There's a few other dedicated keys that you might not find on here. You might have to use a function key with another key to get the key you're looking for. So it's 65% of a regular keyboard. Uh, it's been trying to uh, shed some weight, you could say. You know, and it makes sense if you've got, you know, some people might have some smaller desks out there. Yeah. Um, and it does, it, it definitely does make a difference, you know, if you are using your, your mouse a lot and stuff, if you go from a full-size keyboard and your mouse is way over here, all of a sudden that keyboard shrinks down, you have your mouse a lot yeah. closer. If desk I mean, space is an issue. Yeah, yeah ergonomically, it, it kind of makes sense. But there are some caveats there. You are missing some dedicated keys. One that I dearly miss is the delete key because I can't type with these sausages. <laughs> so I need that delete key. Sure. Often. Yeah, I mean, just looking at it, it's pretty just, it's like a sm it is a small keyboard. It really is. I love my numpad, so that's going to send me out the door right away, but that's just me. Uh, let's see how it sounds, shall we? This is the clicky level. It's pretty nice. If this was an ASMR video, I'd be monetizing the heck out of it right now. There you go. Hopefully that brought you some sort of pleasure. Yeah, so we're dealing with the... Uh the Gatoron Pro switches here. This is the clicky blue variant. You also have your tactile brown, your linear reds. Um, I am a fan of the clicky blue. I'll tell you that. I just love when you hit that certain point in the key, you get that instant gratification of the click. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it just makes me happy. And I, I'll even say that I have another Logitech mechanical, MX mechanical keyboard that I use as my daily driver. I was a little bit disappointed whenever I switched back to that keyboard because I like this typing experience so much. And is it wire? It's not wireless, right? It's fully wired. Oh, no, it is. But it is. You've got it charging. Is that what's happening here? I do. Yeah. I drained the battery. What can I say? I used it a yeah. lot. You know, I wanted to be thorough with this review uh, because this does come at a good price point. So I, I just wanted to make sure I got, you know, all my bases covered. But this is both wireless and wired um, and has actually has a dedicated switch so you can toggle between Bluetooth and wired. And I say Bluetooth because we're not dealing with a dongle here. Yeah. Which I mean, it has can, the internal Bluetooth. It does have internal internal Bluetooth built in. You can connect up to three different devices. It's got a hot key to switch between devices. But missing that dongle, you do miss some features. You know, Bluetooth doesn't wake up super quick. So you go, you sit down, you go to start typing. And if your keyboard's asleep, it'll take you know, three, four, five seconds to, before it wakes up. Sure. It's kind of like me in the morning. I don't want to wake up. 
So and someone then needs to come over and start clicking you and flip your switches. Yeah. For it to happen. And they usually do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so wireless wired, but no dongle and the, the wired mode is true. Uh, wired mode, uh, zero lag, zero just, lag. It's just, okay. yeah. Nice. Um, okay. this is one of the main reasons I wanted to review this. You know, we took a look, like I said, at the, uh, Logitech MX mechanical keyboard. Yeah. We gave that a good review. The biggest flaw of that keyboard was the price point. Mm-hmm. And well, I think that was at like 150, $170, somewhere right around there. Somebody fact checked me. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's high, especially if you're talking about, oh, I've got to give this to users and stuff. It's, it's way beyond the price point for most of your users. This mm-hmm. comes in at about $60. Okay. So drastically lower price point. But again, we are dealing with a 65% here. Yeah. You know, you, if you, if you go up to the full size version, you're probably adding another 10, $20 onto that. Fewer keys, fewer features. But I mean, you do get the fully wired option, which is nice if you want it. But I'm curious, so what made you choose this keyboard to review over any other keyboard? Um, I think this one offers that, like I said, kind of the look that it belongs in an office space. Okay. You know, the the grays, the tones, you get a white backlight, you're not dealing with R- RGB. Yeah. Um, and so it just kind of fits that profile that you would see in an office. Yeah. It's readily accessible on Amazon. You've got Amazon Prime to back it up and stuff. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, so you, you you get a lot of features there that you would kind of come to expect from buying something that you might you know consider giving to your users. Yeah. But that does come with a caveat too. You know, we're we're with the clicky blue here switches. Mm-hmm. You know, we heard it. It's not a quiet keyboard. It's a higher pitched click. And if you are in an open office environment, please. It's going to be a cacophony of clicky. Yes. A clicky, caco- a clicky cacophony. Do not do that to your coworkers. They will hate you. I mean, mine already hate me, but this will just make it worse. All right. Um, so when it is unplugged and you've charged it fully and you're going wireless, how's the battery life? Uh, it's it's pretty decent. There's a couple things to keep in mind, though. So I got uh, about two, two and a half maybe three weeks battery life out of this thing. Uh, The thing to consider is that it basically has an idle time that it's just going to sit there and wait for you to start typing, which is great. But that means the keyboard will just sit there and stay on wasting the battery until it hits that 10 minute timer and then kind of goes to sleep. And there's no way to, ch- to tweak. You that, can huh? tweak that. You can, oh, okay. you can, t- you can tweak the amount of time and stuff, which I do recommend doing to extend that battery life. You can change the backlight settings and stuff like that. Um, you know, it was, it was slightly different, disappointing coming from the, again, I hate to keep bringing it up, but the Logitech, you know, where I had, I think a month and a half, if not longer, it might've been even a couple months of battery life before I needed to charge that. And yeah. I don't even think I drained it all the way. Okay. Um, so that one was really impre- impressive, but it had that smart illumination feature that as you would get close, it would wake up. And then shortly after you stopped ty- typing, it would shut down. Mm. So, okay. uh, you know, it's hit or miss. It's not probably the best but it's also not bad sure yeah so we do get some features here this does support uh windows and mac if you're looking online you'll probably see that um the keycaps probably all look like mac keycaps on there you got your apple key the options yeah. key and stuff um it does come with both keys so you can just easily swap that out in fact it, uh, it also comes with a key removal tool to make it really easy see, that so is actually just, really cool yeah exactly like that. that they yeah. put that in the box you pop out your keys yeah Put in the new ones and then you just have a little toggle switch that you just switch over to windows mode i love that yeah so it's nice that they they added that there is no software here which as an it guy i think is is, is a feature i mean the lack yeah. of the feature is a feature but right so there's no software which i love however mm-hmm. because this is a 65 percent keyboard the lack of software also kind of hits hard because if you're wanting to customize the what few keys you have access to it doesn't have a dedicated software to do that. Sure. So if you're wanting to map something somewhere else, they actually in their documentation will say, oh, hey, here are a few third party options to go and, you know, download and re key stuff. OK, so. well, I mean, that's that is some nice customizability, honestly. Yeah. So so the cons, um, I think the 65 percent is, you know, I said it was a benefit. I think it's also a con. I think. Most of my con- cons come from the viewpoint of a sysadmin. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're giving this to a user, I feel like they're going to have a pretty steep learning curve. And as a sysadmin, that's the last thing you want to do is just give them one more thing that they can have problems with. If they don't know how to customize their own keys, if they are having complaints about Bluetooth not not waking up or Bluetooth not pairing uh, as quickly. Uh, not to mention the 
the sheer volume of the clicks. Right? Yeah, you, know, you got your loud clicks and stuff with it. Um, so there are probably quite a few cons. I think most of the cons that I have, though, come from, like I said, the aspect of a sysadmin. Would I want to support users using this? In my environment, yeah. Yeah, and I got to say, I wouldn't. You know, if mm. I wanted to use it for myself, I think it's great. I would probably go with a little bit bigger size keyboard. I got to have that dedicated delete key. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I had a great experience using it, and I loved it. I would use it for myself. Would I ever give it to my users? Probably yeah. not. Use case for me, I could see myself getting a backpack on, getting a couple of water bottles, a canteen, some snacks. Strap that keyboard on there. Look, you know, it yeah. fit really nice. I could head to Burning Man and I could work on, <laughs> I could actually work on a, some blog posts while I was out there. Yeah. Make sure I get a little work done. Yeah. After all this time, I gave it a review score of five, which is my lowest score yet. But keep in mind that I'm not giving the device itself a five. I'm, again, grading it from the, the point of view of a sysadmin. Yeah. And... Would I want to support it or not? Yeah. And it really comes down to, I think that I would get too many calls from too many users having too many issues that yeah. I wouldn't want to deal with. If from that perspective, it's a five out of 10, which is smart tech reviews lowest score yet. However, uh, it's not a bad keyboard for again, the enthusiast uh, keyboard enthusiast or someone with an at home use where they needed a, a small form factor and, and just enjoyed mechanical typing. Yeah. It may not be the best option for your office, but uh, something to consider uh, going forward. You know, even if you're looking at like just going to the full size yeah. with, the, with the Keychron, I think K4, you might even there, you might have a better experience. But again, you're bumping that price point. Yeah. And the higher the price point goes, that tends to weigh heavy on the final score as well. So. Yeah. Uh, that is what we have to offer on the show today. Uh, make sure to let us know in the comments if there are any other keyboards you would recommend or if there are any other pieces of technology that in the IT environment have changed the game for you positively or negatively. And we will see about reviewing those on our show. I think that's going to do it for us. Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, this has been Smart Tech Reviews. I'm Jake. And I'm Brock. And we are li the Lightning Brothers.